and welcome to another RSR. Tonight I'm reviewing Toronto FC 2, LA Galaxy 2, and match 29 of the 2022 MLS season. Toronto FC go down early, take the lead, and then blow it. But still got a point. They're still rolling. That's all that matters. We'll get into that. 24th minute free kick given to the LA Galaxy. Victor Vasquez, former Toronto FC man, and Douglas Costa standing over it. Douglas Costa takes the shot, bangs it in past Alex Bono. He could do nothing about that. I'm not blaming that one on him. 1-0 LA Galaxy. Then in the 62nd minute, Jesus Jimenez gets the ball played in. He gets to tap it in, puts it past the defender and Jonathan Bond for his first goal. Since the Columbus game is 10th of the season, 11th all comps. Yeah, 11th all comps. Great for him. Breaks his cold streak. He finally gets one. It'd be great if he starts doing that. More than this. We'll see. 1-1. One, one. Then in the 81st minute, Raheem Edwards, a former Toronto FC man, brings down Federico Bernardeschi in the box. It's given a penalty, not even checked. Bernardeschi gets the penalty. He steps up to take it, goes 3-for-3 three three on penalties as a red. Puts it past Jonathan Bond, goes off the hand of Jonathan Bond, and in. And that's a goal, 2-1 to one, Toronto FC. Then in the 89th minute, 8 minutes later, Ricky Puig, Runs through the midfield. They basically part the Red Sea for him, don't they? And he takes a banger of a shot past Alex Bono. Curls it in, makes it 2-2. And that's the way it would end after seven minutes of stoppage time. The extra to the 90th minute. And the seven minutes of stoppage time, it's 2-2. Two two, but what a beautiful goal by Ricky Puig. Two beautiful goals that Alex Bono could do nothing about from the LA Galaxy. And we draw. We get a point. But we're two points out of the playoffs. I'll get to the scenarios in the later part of the video. Because on Sunday, if things go our way, we still do have a playoff spot if we beat Montreal. We will be in seventh if we beat Montreal if things go our way over the weekend. So, I'll tell you that. We're still rolling. That's the only thing that matters is what I'm saying. We're still rolling. Two to two, draw. Could have had three points and been in seventh on the night tonight. But, of course, Ricky Pui got to change that. Put a dagger in our hearts, but we're still right there. Stats are as follows. 13 shots to 12. Two shots on goal to 5. 42% possession to 58% possession. 411 passes to 579. 85% pass accuracy to 88% pass accuracy. 7 fouls to 13. Two offside to 3. One yellow card to 2. Zero red cards to 0. And four corners to 4. TFC... The second half, they were the better team. They were the better team, the stronger team. They wanted to score those goals. They did score those goals. They should have won this match. But LA Galaxy, the two best chances they had were those two beautiful goals off the free kick. And the Ricky Puig, they parted the Red Sea. He curled it in. He plays for Barca. He played for Barca. Of course he's going to do that. Great game from Ricky Puig. Honestly, Man of the match, I may have to go the other way. I don't think there was anybody on Toronto that really deserves man of the match. Like, they played well, but it was really as a team. Like, Bernardeschi, maybe. Jimenez, great for him to score a goal. Insigne doesn't deserve it. He had sort of a bad game, and he didn't have a moment of greatness. He was struggling. Didn't have a moment of greatness to show off. Bono... He still did allow two goals. You can't really give that to him. Crescito played well. Larea played well, but didn't really stand out. Midfield, good enough. McNaughton, that yellow card was boneheaded, and then he got taken off for O'Neal. I don't think anybody on Toronto really deserves man of the match, but they played well as a team. They played well on the night. But... L.A. had the luckier goals. They had enough lucky goals, enough beautiful goals that you can't really do nothing about. I shouldn't say lucky, but beautiful. They had enough that there were beautiful goals, great shots that you can't do nothing about. And Toronto had to scrape their goals. A tap-in from Jimenez, which I'm happy he scored. It's nice to see Jimenez score again. And Bernardeschi getting a penalty. 
it wasn't really greatness like the Charlotte game or the Portland game or some of these other games that we've seen with the Italians. No, it was more of an early season game. Like, some of the early season games, they scored goals, but they were very, very scrappy. Like, that Jimenez goal was shades of April, shades of May. Like, that's exactly what that was. The Bernardeschi play, shades of Pozuelo getting a penalty, honestly, when he was still here. So, with that being said, you're looking at the way Toronto played. They had really no moments of brilliance. They just scraped goals. L.A. were the ones who had the brilliant goals. I'm not going to complain about it. Those were some... I'll tip my hat to both of those goals. I'll tip my hat to Douglas Costa and Ricky Puig. I will tip my hat because those are some beautiful goals. I cannot get mad at that. I can't get mad at Bono. I can kind of get mad at the midfield on the Puig goal, but I'm not going to do it because we're still in a playoff hunt. We're not out. That didn't eliminate us. If it was 3-2 to two and we lost and it pretty much eliminated us, I'd be like, yeah, I'm I'm going to ream you out. But right now, I we're still in. That's all that matters. We are still in. That's all that matters. But LA played well. They Greg Vanny got them hyped. Even if he did rotate the team, he got them hyped. He got them hyped. He was like, this game matters a lot to me. Don't lose it. I'd rather hope you win, but just don't lose it. And that's honestly one of the best performances I've seen from a Greg Vanny rotated team since Columbus in 2017. It, it was one of the best because when you have something to play for and Greg Vanny rotates you, he'll, I guess, he will motivate them and he did. I can't get mad at that. Bob Bradley, they didn't shut out the game. They didn't shut down the game. They didn't close out the game. They still have that problem that they've had all season because there are some games that if they had gotten points in and shut down and got a point, we'd be in a playoff spot right now. Two of them. All we needed was two. They did because they can't close out games. They have some problems with that. Even with the Italians, it's been sort of clench and hope, and that's why. Man of the match for me before we get into the scenarios for TFC, Ricky Puig. I'm going the other way. I, I can't give it to a Toronto player. The way this game was played, it was a very tight game. Yes, team is a star for Toronto FC, but you can't give man of the match to everybody. I got to go with Ricky Puig. Ricky Puig was a, playing a beautiful game of football tonight. I have to give him his props. I do sometimes give props because when you're bad, how you have a man of the match? So it goes the other way. And this time it was just by greatness, just by great football that it goes the other way. Very rarely, but sometimes you have to do it. But he earned it, Ricky Puig. Damn good player. Very, very good player. Shows that he shouldn't have got screwed over by Ronald Koeman and Xavi. But great goal. Played great as a 10 for the LA Galaxy. Since this is what they need. They needed that. They needed a number 10 like Ricky Puig. To make the team better. Like Victor Vasquez is great. But he's sort of getting old. But he still showed out tonight. As a dual eight. He showed out. He played well. But Ricky Puig. Damn good football by Ricky Puig. Amazing. It was It was amazing to watch. And I'm not a Barca fan. But I know he's got talent. I know he's got potential. But here's the sad part, right? He never got to show it at Barca really. Now he goes to LA, playing a position they need, and he's hit the ground running. And he shows off to be the best player here. Saves them a draw instead of a loss. Honestly deserved for him, I have to say. But man of the match, Ricky Puig. So now for the scenarios for Toronto FC. As I said, on Sunday, they could still be holding a playoff spot by the end of the weekend if things go their way. Of course, Toronto has to beat Montreal. Miami is not playing till September 10th. They have a bye week after tonight. They lost to Columbus. They're at 36 points. If Toronto wins, they will be at 37 points. They will have been over them by one point, and they have a better goal differential anyway. New York plays New England. We need a New York win against New England or a draw, but 
they can win. And Cincy plays Charlotte. We need a Charlotte draw and a Toronto win. A Cincy, a Cincy versus Charlotte draw or a Charlotte win, I'll take a draw. I don't know if they could beat Cincy. A New York win or draw over New England and a Toronto win over Montreal. We are in the playoffs. We are in seventh place by the end of the weekend. So things can go our way. Things went our way tonight. Can they go our way next weekend or this upcoming weekend? I, I think so. New York beating New England or drawing them, that seems pretty easy to me. I think New York isn't that bad. I mean, New England freaking drew Chicago at home, mind you. We should have beat them twice. They lost to the LA Galaxy. Galaxy barely held on, but there you go. I think New York should still beat New England no matter what. Charlotte Cincy, that could be a problem, but that's probably the most least likely thing. We'll either be right on the line or over it, but that's the one that's least likely to me. I think we beat Montreal. We're at home. We kicked their ass without the Italians. We almost beat them in Montreal without the Italians. They're not really that they are up there, but they're sort of a paper tiger at second place in the East. They lost to the Red Bulls. We're at home. It's the CNE. It's the 401 Derby. Mark Anthony K and Oso should be back. I think they will be. And we kicked their ass without the Italians last time they rocked up to BMO Field. And we almost beat them in Saputo. And we honestly at least should have drew about, what, a month and a half ago without the Italians? We should have drew that match. So I think we win. I honestly think we beat Montreal on the weekend, on Sunday night. We beat Montreal. So we do that part. We do our part. I think New York will help us. Charlotte's the one that I'm really worried about. But but if it all goes our way, we're in seventh place. Ending this week on Sunday, going into next week with four matches to go. It's not over yet. This draw is not the end-all, be-all. If it was a loss, it probably would be. But two points out of the playoffs. Miami doesn't play. We have to hope for two results to go our way besides doing our own job. I think we could do it, though. I think it's very likely that all those things come together. And then after that, we have Orlando, Atlanta. Orlando on the road, Atlanta on the road. Miami at home and away to Philly. We have to basically go 3-0-1 there if we beat Montreal. But I think we could do it. Wait. Wait, 5 0 and 1 is all of them, ain't it? But basically, even if we draw Philly, I think we can handle. But basically, going 4 0 after the Montreal match, if we win it, is pretty much the way we have to go. 3 0 and 1 could probably do it, but you're really pushing the wall there. But with that being said, with that being said, Toronto has a chance to be in a playoff spot at the end of the week after their match on Sunday night. They could have been in a playoff spot tonight, and they could have sealed it, not sealed it, but gotten more cushion on Sunday. Almost did, but we could still be in a playoff spot by the end of the week. That's all that matters. And I think we are. I legitimately think we are. Those results went our way tonight. I think the football gods are looking down on us and saying, or looking at us and saying, you know what? We want the narratives. Go make it. And honestly, I could see it. So with that being said, Toronto, they still have a chance. It's not over yet. Not the best match, not the worst. At least it's not a loss, and we go on. We move to Sunday for the 401 Derby. With that being said, if you like this video, like it, share, subscribe. You know what it is. Tell your friends. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification. Once you subscribe, send super chats on the live streams. Comment on this video. Put it to play. Share it with friends and family. All that great stuff. I will see you on Saturday. My full-on audience on Saturday for Mississippi State or Memphis versus Mississippi State in Starkville. College football is back. I'm going to cover my team. I'll be live, do a RSR for it, and I hope you all enjoy it. Hopefully you show up because I know some of y'all want to anyway. So, show up. Hail State. Don't let the Reds get hot. We still got this. I still believe. Let's go. I'm Ryan and I'm out. Peace.